And welcome to Nightline. I'm Pastor Benny, and we're so glad to have you. You're going to enjoy the program. because Listen, we've got great music. I'm telling you right now, such a sweet dear. Uh, Pastor Angie's going to be singing. She's going to bless our hearts. She'll be with us in the last half hour, so don't go anywhere. But our guest tonight, wow. I've just met them. They've, they're no strangers here. But uh, uh, Pastor Freddie Johnson from North Point Community Church there in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, you need to go to their website. Great website. Must be a dynamic church there in the Columbia area. And then I'm going to say this right, Mrs. Chris Swatako. Uh, and uh, she's the co-founder of the Singles Network Ministry. Yes, the ministry. And uh, she is a single gal, single lady. Uh, she was uh, dating uh, Fred Bell, but they didn't get married because of the end name that it could result in. Isn't that right, uh, uh, Miss Chris? But anyways, we'll talk more about that with them in just a moment. We, uh, our scripture tonight is taken uh, from Titus chapter 2. You know, we don't hear many messages from Titus chapter 2. We don't hear many messages at all from the book of Titus, but it's in there. And listen to these words that uh, Paul has written. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. That's Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Remember, uh, if you will, right here is that number right there on top of my hand. I hope I did it right this time. Uh, you see it, 864-244-1616. Give us a call. Our prayer partners are standing by. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. Uh, maybe you just want to talk with somebody, and we want to talk with you. So go to your telephone anytime between now and 9.30 this evening and know that we care for you, know that you are loved, and we, we really treasure the fact that you would call us tonight. God's richest blessings on you. And before our guests come, listen, Miss Angie Cleveland, Pastor Angie Cleveland, is going to sing, I'll Become Nothing. All right, Pastor, lead us now. humility so you can be king of kings that way all things bow under your veil now I realize my disguise of power was all the figment of my imagination so I run to you without hesitation becoming nothing Becoming nothing I'll become nothing So you can be everything My way of doing things will fail I'll walk in humility So you can be king of kings That way all things bow under your bell Now I realize my disguise of power was all a figment of my imagination. So I run to you without hesitation, becoming nothing, becoming nothing.
was all a figment of my imagination. But I run to you without hesitation, becoming nothing. Becoming nothing. Becoming nothing. Becoming nothing. I humble myself before you. I lay down my will for yours. Becoming nothing. Decrease and you increase inside of me, Lord. Oh. That's Pastor Angie Cleveland. She's going to join us in just a few moments. And, and listen, uh, Pastor, thank you so much. And I'll remind you, she wrote all of the songs that you hear tonight. She wrote all of them, words and music, and so we're very, very grateful. I want you to join with me. Here's some guests that would be very familiar if you are an avid watcher of Nightline. I want you to join with me in welcoming Miss Chris Swatako, who is the co-founder of the Singles Network Ministries. And Pastor Freddie Johnson, who's at the North Point Community Church in Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome to both of you. I'm so glad to have you all here. It's my you. first time to be with you, and I'm just honored. And listen, let me tell, let me correct something, okay? <laughs> she is not engaged. You're not married. You're a single gal, right. and she is not dating Fred Bell. <laughs> I just want you to know that, okay? I wanted to set the record. I just thought when she told me that if she married a guy by the name of Bell, her name would be uh, Chris so I Taco Bell. So I just, I thought that was cute. Anyways, you're, you're I, a good sport. I, I think it'd be wonderful. Like you said, somebody remember me for sure, right? <laughs> you you are a great sport. And uh, our people, some will be watching tonight that don't know you. And uh, uh, Chris, I'm going to let you start first. And Pastor, mm -hmm. if you'll go after her. But just tell the folks a little bit about you. Uh, and we'll touch on ministries and all that sure. in a minute. But just a little bit about you. And, uh, and then we'll okay. go to Pastor Freddie. Well, like I said, I'm Chris Wataco. And I lead a ministry called the Singles Network Ministries. And I live in, in Hendersonville, not too far away. Yep. Just moved there about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago. And been a full-time ministry 20 years. Speaking, teaching the Word, traveling. Great. Um, been to, I've spoken in about 47 states and about 13 countries and God has just opened up the door, primarily single adults, although I've done, you know, other types of ministry as well. But yeah. I just, you know, my heart is I tell people I want to reach the, the lost and, and help uh, find, you know, those that are saved, want to disciple them and grow them and help them find their place to serve yeah. and uh, build leadership because we yeah. don't have leadership. We can't reach anybody, yeah. you know, so yeah. we, we, need, we need all parts. I've got to ask you that name, Swataco. Now, you understand I discovered America here in, in, in Spartanburg, South Carolina. <laughs> Swataco, that is uh, what a, a name from where? That's uh, not, uh, not from around here. Uh, I you don't, don't think. think so? I, I don't you, think. No, no, no. Uh, actually, it's Polish. Okay. Um, so my father came to okay. America in 1955 okay. uh, by way of Argentina, by way of Poland. So my, right. my Family, my uh, father's side of the family are actually post World War II. Gotcha. Um, you know, concentration camp escaped the whole bit, like a, like a TV movie. Yeah. My mother's yeah. side, we're just mutts. We don't, <laughs> we don't really know where we're from. We just, you know, we just know we're from somewhere. But uh, yeah, so. That uh, fascinating. And so, uh, your full time uh, ministry, do uh, you preach and teach and speak and all the above, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isn't that great? I love it. I bet you do. I, I, love I can. It. I can tell you do. <laughs> this is Pastor Freddie Johnson, and let me encourage you. Both of these, you need to check their website out from time to time. We'll put that up. I encourage you to go. If listen, particularly, I don't know what market you're watching our program in today, but let me just tell you this. Go and check out uh, Pastor Freddie's uh, website. It's easy to navigate. It really is. NorthPointColumbia.com. And I really, I enjoyed getting on there, just seeing all that you've got going. You know, as a pastor, I am. Tell us, Pastor Fred, a little bit about yourself, please. Sir. Well, thank you very much. First of all, it's always great to be here. I'm originally from Hendersonville, North Carolina. Okay. Right. And so Western North Carolina and the Columbia, mm -hmm. uh, Greenville, Spartanburg area has always been kind of a part of my life. But I grew up there. I was a part of a, a farming family, produce family. And uh, then I went into the business world. 
And uh, I was uh, never saw being in ministry as being one of my top 1,000 things to do in life. <laughs> and uh, then one night I was in a bar in Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, I met a guy named uh, Jesus who radically saved my life. Amen. And out of that, I Amen. went into, I've uh, been in uh, full-time ministry for a little over 30 years now. Started with singles ministry up in Western North Carolina area with a ministry called FOCUS, which was an acronym for Fellowship of Christian Singles. We okay. ministered to a lot of folks down here in the Greenville, uh, Spartanburg area, uh -huh. as well as all of Western North Carolina. Uh, out of that, God has kind of blessed me with some different opportunities. I, for seven years, was a consultant for the Billy Graham organization. Mm -hmm. And in those seven right. years, I was uh, on five continents. So I've been all over the world. Yeah. And then uh, and then out of that, he kind of took me out of uh, singles ministry and then eventually became an executive pastor and then eventually being the lead pastor of churches. Yeah. And so almost everything about my ministry life is unorthodox, okay? <laughs> I didn't take any of the, the normal paths that any but most how, pastors take. So. Isn't it wonderful to know that God can do anything He wants with anybody who's willing and obedient? Mm -hmm. That's I right. Mean, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I, I want to just tell you that uh, you check out their website. I mean, it's fascinating. It's easy to navigate. And you see that the, this uh, Pastor Freddie's church ministers to the whole person, the whole family. Uh, whether you're whether you're single, single again, or a full family, whatever, a Brady Bunch, however you might be, they meant. So I won't encourage you to go there and check it out. Now I've got to come back to Chris. You know, for me, when we talk about singles, uh, I've been married quite a while. I've been married more of my life than I was uh, single. Okay, because I got married when I was 20, and um, I know life has changed. A lot of folks are waiting to get married much longer. For example, my son uh, in medical school, uh, 37, 38, mm -hmm. uh, just got married last November for the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. Married a young lady who's 33 for the first time. And uh, they, uh, his life was school, hers was just trying to find the niche. Uh, in your ministry, I mean, you have a phenomenal ministry and you need to check out their website as well. I mean, it is so helpful. I mean, yes. it's full. It's yeah. full. It's the Wikipedia for singles ministry. It's I mean, the it's the largest it, website in the world on how to start, grow, build your ministry. Right. Every, you know, and not only do I, you know, put in my information on there, but I also list other speakers, right. other websites, right. people who support singles because over half our country is not married. That's based on the 2010 census. Isn't that unreal? So it's probably much higher today. It's uh -huh. probably closer to 60, even more percent. Percentage right. that are not married, uh, Pastor, but but our churches are not always reflective of it. And no. so, uh, it, but like you said, things have changed. Um, Twenty yeah. years ago, twenty-five years ago, when I was involved in singles, there were mega ministries everywhere yeah. you went. There was a singles ministry, right. and uh, and in the last twenty years, between online dating and Facebook and um, mm. smartphones and uh, the, the, I call them the movie theater churches, right. the, the churches that have started where right. there's no Sunday school. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday school is a killer. If you don't have Sunday school, Singles Ministries has a hard time thriving. Yeah. So all those things have affected. And then the fact of just not being mentored, not being discipled, right. not growing in maturity right. so you can get married if that's the calling that God has on your life. Right. Right. So all those factors have affected um, but the work is still there. It hasn't changed. We still need to keep doing it. You know, on your website, I think, I know you had some conferences scheduled and you have to reschedule them. I think that's what I saw, yep, right? Yep, reschedule Between now and things. the end of the year, am I correct yep, in saying yep. that? Yeah. So, uh, but it's all good because uh, yeah. I haven't stopped ministering. Uh, yeah. The call's still there. The mission's there, but you just have to tweak it and change it and go yeah. around a different way. And, and uh, I've been just as busy uh, in the last uh, three, four months as I've been ever. I just don't okay. drive. I'm doing a lot of webinars, a lot of mm -hmm. Zooms. Yeah, yeah. But the heart and the desire for community among single adults, fellowshipping, and singles still want to get married. Yeah. No matter yeah. what goes on. Right. Um, right. But not every single will get married. Right. And not everybody's healthy enough. And so the ministry to them continues. And you know what's interesting is we were talking b before the uh, program began. You made sure, and I'm glad you did, you accented the fact that this is not just a singles network, this is a network ministry. Yes, and I mean, which is a huge difference between Match.com and, and yes, the sir. other things that you see out there. And you see, for someone like myself, uh, I try to understand that. I, I really do. I, I don't think that I do. I try. Because it just, I got married in 72. Yeah. So it was just, uh, you know, a different world back then. I mean, right. life was a little bit easier except for Vietnam and Watergate. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, it was fairly simple. Pastor Freddie, yes, uh, having come from a, 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 as you said, a uh, singles background, having worked with single ministries, in your church, 
uh, would, would this be a, a big segment of your church ministry? Now, again, I see you've got children, youth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got the gamut there. And, mm -hmm. and it, um, it's, again, a fascinating website. What, what would you say about uh, your singles ministry? Well, I guess I would backtrack, first of all, and uh, kind of go back to my roots and, and how I got started in ministry. When I, came, when I got saved in the bar, uh, I left the business world, and then I went into single adult ministry. Yeah. And I was up at a church, uh, Bent Creek Baptist Church in Asheville, North Carolina at that time. Oh, and is. we did an outreach ministry called Focus that I mentioned earlier. And we were able to reach really literally all over western North Carolina, into Tennessee, Georgia, uh, here in the, the Columbia, or in the uh, Greenville and Spartanburg area as well. And part of that was because I was single that, at that time mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't marry until I was 42 years old, okay. and so uh, I spent a lot of my time as a single adult, and God instilled in me just a passion for single adults during that. And so out of that, even though my ministry life has kind of transitioned into some other things over the last several years, and now being the lead pastor of church, I try to never, first of all, never forget where I came from, the roots right. that I came from. Right. And so as you mentioned, our church, we try to be well-rounded yes, in the things you, that we yeah. minister to and to yeah. do. Um, and so... Uh, I, in every sermon, I try to incorporate some uh, element of singleness into it or at least make sure that my message are applicable, whether you're married or whether you're mm -hmm. uh, single or, or that. And so, uh, and then, of course, we try to have small groups. We try to do some specific things that help uh, bring singles together right. and, and activities of that as well. Well, one thing that I know from talking to other pastor friends who's, who have great large single ministries, uh, that is, an, uh, and I mean this with all reverence, that is an untapped yes, monetary uh, group all of folks. Untapped in lots of ways. I mean, it, well, it is, and, and, and they are very gifted, uh, very smart, very educated, highly educated, and um, when they find the church that, that is meeting their needs and they see a church that they can get in there and help the church meet other needs, Boy, they get involved. This is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the two of you have known one another for quite a while. Yeah, yeah longer than we both want to admit, probably. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, close, to, close to 20 years yeah, now, 20 I guess. 20 years, yeah. And, and yeah. When, when you met, uh, would you have thought that uh, the ministries that you're involved in, <laughs> would they be what they are today? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't even know. You know, it's funny is that I was helping. I was uh, part of a big retreat called Labor Day Singles. It was at Ridgecrest at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, God would, it was definitely funny because eventually I would end up taking over that retreat with Pastor Freddie. But uh, because of my relationships there and networking, I love to network. Sure. Um, I met somebody who then told me about an event down at the beach in Myrtle Beach for single mm -hmm. adults. And, yeah. I, and I was going to be a speaker. And then Freddie was at Shannon Baptist at the time as the singles pastor. He was also a speaker. And they made the mistake or the blessing of putting us side by side. <laughs> oh, my. And he teaches with energy. And I sure. teach with energy. I and I'm loud. And he's loud. And, great. And so he came over afterwards. And do you, I, we always, we're not sure we have this clarity. <laughs> but I perceived that he came over and wanted to know why would somebody put me, you know, put me beside him. And uh, because we were so similar and, and the walls were thin. And, uh, and we just became friends ever since. Right. And, uh, and he, it, because he invited me to Shannon, it opened up a door for me because it is a business in some ways yeah. of yeah. ministry. And sure. so when a sure. church opens up the door to bring someone in, especially a female that's in ministry, um, that credibility opened up doors for mm -hmm. me to go to other churches, which mm -hmm. actually helped grow the ministry. Right. So, and so uh, both of your ministries, they, they meet not just a single denomination, but all denominations, right? This is what I'm picking up from you, Absolutely. that, that yeah. you're, you're interested in the person, not, mm -hmm. the, not the label. Yes, I mean, sir. you know, and sometimes, I think sometimes churches have, have really shot themselves in the foot because they, they have label first, you yeah. know, and that's the biggie right. thing. And I don't know that people are going to come to your church because you're Methodist or Presbyterian or no. Baptist or Pentecostal. Right. Well, singles don't care. No. Um, they, they're all about community and fellowship. And denominations not as important. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be concerned no, or that if I'm they believe you. something you don't agree with. Sure. But their goal when they first come to a church isn't necessarily what the sermon is or how great the music is. Right. They're there to see, is there somebody like me? Does, my, does that pastor care about me? Does right. he acknowledge that I'm in the audience? Right. And singleness is not just somebody who's never been married. It's a single mother that's 30 years old, yeah. raising two little kids. It's a yeah. widower. It's a divorced individual. It's a college student. Yeah. And so when that pastor says something to make you feel like, wow, he acknowledges that I'm here. Mm -hmm. He understands. He's used to story like 
Jesus was single, what a concept. <laughs> you know, Paul was single, Mary, Martha. Then all of a sudden you feel included. Yeah. And that's their priority. And yeah. so the other stuff comes later. Yeah. I'm not saying that's, that they're not some that, that the denomination no, is I'm most important you. to them. But it's it's more so looking for fellowship and similarities. And, and I think and I salute the fact that your that your ministries uh, you you go after the the whole person. We're talking tonight uh, with uh, uh, Pastor Freddie, and we're talking with Chris Watako. They'll be back with us in just a moment. Pastor Angie's going to sing for us right now. Live in me. All right, Pastor. Father, we worship you. We turn our hearts to you in this moment. We give you all of us unashamedly. We're vulnerable in your presence, Lord. This is our prayer to you today. Living God, live inside of me holy fire burn deep within me I am waiting for you I am desperate for you I am waiting to live, live inside of me, holy fire, burn deep within me, I am well, and I am desperate. And I am desperate, I am desperate Lord. I am waiting in expectation. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'll stand right here and wait on. safe in your presence. There is no other safe place we'd rather be. 
Hallelujah. You are the most certain. Glory to God. Out of everything that is uncertain around us, you are the most certain thing. And we turn our hearts. We turn our hearts to you in submission to your will, in submission to your word. We turn our hearts to you. Oh, God, we do it unashamedly because we know we are safe in you. And we are waiting. We are desperate for I you. Great, thank you, Pastor. And you know, I'm telling you, she she blesses your heart. You, you'll see from time to time. We'll put up there on the screen uh, how you can get her CDs. I, I asked her before we came on the air. Uh, could she give me a CD? Now, you know that I collect CDs. They have to be autographed, and I'll push that thing to the cows come home if you'll give it to me uh, or if you have a book. Do you have a book? I do. I have several. Do you have them here? No, sir. Mm. Now, see? There you go. Would you? If I, you'll I, tell didn't, me. I didn't feel like I was here to promote the books, but they just go to the singlesnetwork.org. They're all there. Okay. And I'm going to say that, and you're going to get me your bestseller and autograph it and get it to me, right? Yes, and the fact I might have one in the car. I'll if look. you do, that w that would be great. Tonight before we leave, I would like. But and the reason I say that is because I, I I couldn't tell you all the crew would tell you. I I have hundreds, literally books yes. of guests who we've yes. had. They autograph every one or CDs. You read them? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Most <laughs> of them I do. Now a lot of them are very easy to read. You can read in a couple of hours, yes. and and. Uh, and the books are maybe 60, 70 pages, you know yeah. what I'm saying. But uh, yes, I do. I, I really do. And then people at my churches won't, won't, want to get them, and I, I put my name in there, and yes, then sir. some of you still have my books. Don't forget that. Yes. Oh, by the way, before we continue our conversation, prayer partners are standing by. You need to call that number. They're waiting on you, 864-244-1616. Don't make us come to the house and get you, so give us a call. We're waiting for you. We want to pray with you. We're talking about singles ministry uh, tonight with uh, uh, Miss Chris Swatako and Pastor Freddie Johnson from the church down there, North Point and Columbia. Pastor, tell me again, is it North Point, North Point Columbia Church? How, how, how does it read? Well, the name of our church is North Point Community Church, and our Community. website is uh, northpointcolumbia.com. Okay, all right. Okay. And please go to that because it is a very interesting uh, website. Do you keep your sermons backlogged on there? I, I was Absolutely. just looking more at the tabs up yeah, there. Yeah, we've got them all archived and... Uh, you know, we've done some pretty incredible stuff through the years as far as series and things. And yeah. so actually doing a great series right now that uh, people can archive, uh, that uh, they can go back and look up uh, yeah. in, in that as well. So, I, I, Here's a question for both of you. Pastor, you may want, Pastor Fred, you might want to lead us off on this. All right. When I, I, I came up, and this is my only reference point, but uh, maybe a lot of you can identify with me. Um, I uh, graduated high school in 1970. I went to North Greenville College. I met my wife. We were married in December of 1972. Well, I was 20, and that's just what you did. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, back then, that's what you did. And so singles ministry w was not a, uh, I have to say, priority. Mm -hmm. I mean, the churches I was going into, they were trying to get a youth ministry going mm -hmm. or right. senior adult. What, uh, what changes, and of course, Pastor, you've been in the work a long time, particularly in singles, but uh, what can you shed, what light can you shed with us on how you've seen the, that ministry change? I have, to, I have to think it certainly has. Well, I think you hit a, a, a big point in that, in that especially back in the, the time when you were growing up and as I was coming through, uh, it was just kind of the thing. You got married. Yeah, you okay? did. You did. And uh, as everything about my life has been a little unorthodox <laughs> in ministry and things, uh, I was voted the least likely to ever marry in my single <laughs> class. Now... There were a different set of reasons that ended up being as to why is that. Most people just thought I, I was it. never going to settle down to one relationship long it. enough for that to happen. Yeah. But as I told you earlier, I met a guy named Jesus in a bar Amen. one night, changed Amen. my life forever. <laughs> and as I came out of that, he led me right directly into a single adult ministry that had just been started in the Western North Carolina area called Focus. Uh, it was an outreach ministry of Bent Creek Baptist Church. And within about three year period of time, it transitioned out of the, the leadership that was there mm -hmm. to the, I became the pastor of it, the leader of it. Wow. And yeah. 
Some of the things that have changed, I think, radically through that is, is multiple things, really, when it comes down to it. First of all, in those days, almost everything was event-driven. So we, mm -hmm. we had events. We did things. Uh, we had dances. Sure. Okay, sure. we were called, uh, sure. you know, snake handlers uh -huh. and everything else because we were, every, we were going to hell people. because we were having dances. But you okay? were reaching people. Yes. And Amen. we were reaching people Amen. here in Greenville yes, and, and Spartanburg yes, and, and all over Western North Carolina and things with that. So it was event-driven. And then in addition to that, Almost everybody was about my age at the time that were single. Huh. And then as we kind of, as the ministry went on and went on for about 20 years, uh, you know, people began to age. Some got married. Unfortunately, some got divorced. Some became single parents. And so you had all these different kind of pieces that started to mold into the single adult ministry. And so it wasn't as simple then as just saying, let's just have an event, invite a bunch of single people to come and just see who shows up. It had to become more specialized over uh, that span of time with yeah. that. And so that was yeah. one of the, some of the bigger changes yeah. that I saw take place right. in it over yeah. the years. And Chris, uh, when we talk about changes now, uh, we were alluding uh, a moment ago about how uh, if ministry started, there were people maybe the same age, but now yeah. you're dealing with today. Yeah. You could deal with uh, someone who's single at age 60 right. versus someone who's yeah. age 24. Yes. I mean, and there, yeah. there's a gap. Yeah. And so how, how how are you putting these ministries, yeah. how, putting these people together? Right, uh, right. And uh, tell us about that. How, well, you how know, like, well, like Freddie, too, you know, I started in singles ministry in my 20s. And I became a part of a group called Solo, Singles Offering Life to Others, which later on would become a part of the Campus Crusade, okay. which yes. is kind of my background. Okay. And, uh, and so when I joined, it was for a group for 22 to 33. 3, 34, and I thought them older people, <laughs> yeah. somebody 35, that old person, they, I don't even care what they did. Yeah. And uh, so that was our target age. And no, we had one single parent that had kids. Nobody else had ever been married. Yeah. And, but as, as I aged up and I got into my 30s, I started noticing there's just other huge amount of single adults out there. Huh. Divorce care got developed, grief share got developed, right. celebrate recovery got developed. And these were uh, ministries and programs that actually drew in people that were single. Yes. And now they go through divorce care and then where do they go now? You know, they, they like to be a part of a ministry, sure. but the church doesn't have anything. And, not, and please understand, singles ministry is not an end. It's not a church within a church. Right, it's right. it's just simply a gate to bring people into the church, right. to be able to reach them for Christ in order to get them plugged into the church to be whole. That's our goal. But as I aged up, I started noticing, well, what do we do with a 60-year-old who is not ready to sit in a rocking chair? So what you know, do you do? You know, and, <laughs> and what do you do with a 35-year-old single mom who yeah. wants to be married, but right now she wants to put food on the table? Mm. And what do you do to that 25-year-old guy who is, you know, struggling to get a job and he's back living with his parents again? Mm. Mm. So what you have to do is you have to, as a ministry, because I help people start ministries. I work with churches all over the country and abroad, mm -hmm. right. helping people start singles ministries. And so you first have to identify, well, what is our audience? What is our target audience? Right. You cannot minister to every demographic unless you're a full-time pastor with right. staff. Right. So right. if you're the average volunteer, you basically target who you are because that's your, that's your background, that's your story. Right. And, and that's who you're gonna draw in versus trying to draw in a different demographic that maybe you don't have anything to do with. And so with that, I mean, I, just listening, I, I would think that it would, be, it would be such a challenge when you have people, when you have such a broad spectrum of uh, as, you know, 20, 22 year old all the way up to 60 or older. I mean, you know, there is a, a, a dating site now called Our Time or mm -hmm. something like that, or 55 and over. I mean, I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding. Yeah. But I don't mean that ugly. Please understand. I'm just saying, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand. And, and part of my being here to, uh, tonight is learning. And I hope you are too. And if you're single, single again. Or if you're single again and again, <laughs> I want you to know Jesus loves you. Amen. He loves you Amen. so much. And people want to talk with you and encourage you. And I know these two folks would as well. So with that challenge, here's a question. Maybe this is wide open for both you and the pastor. What are we going to see in the next 10 years mm -hmm. in yeah. single ministry? Right. What, 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 uh, pastor, if I can't, what are, what are we going to see? Well, I think it's an interesting question because as, as we all know that over the last uh, year or so in all of our lives, life has changed yes. because of just different things with yes. COVID and things yes. that happened through that time. And so I think all of us are going to see a different church, yeah. okay, in many, I many agree. ways. And I so agree. I think 
Yes. This is going to be applicable to singles as well. So I think we're going to see, one, I think there'll be more emphasis again on small group type ministries, whether okay. it's a Sunday school, whether it's a group that's meeting in a home or something, uh, less event type stuff continued. Uh, hopefully there'll still be some retreats around like ours right. and we want to invite singles to that when we right. have the opportunity to do that. And then I think it's going to take pastors uh, being intentional and they're going to have to see the, the value of single adults in their, in their church and in their yes. ministry. And I, I still believe that is the greatest wall that has to be overcome. Is, and it's not necessarily a slam because I've been a pastor for 30 years sure. now. Sure. I'm with but you. it's just the idea <clears throat> that they really don't get it because of going back to some of the things that you said earlier, mm -hmm. you're here to learn because yeah. you really don't know much about it. I don't, know. And no. you can't have mm -hmm. that as a life experience if mm -hmm. that's not your life experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the only way you can learn is just to learn from people who have that as their life experience mm -hmm. or right. just going through the process of that. Right. Chris, what about you? I mean, uh, what, um, what do you look? If you looked in a crystal ball, yeah, 10, yeah. 15 years, what, yeah. what do you think we're going to see? Well, it's interesting, you know, uh, you know, coming off a little bit what Pastor Freddie was saying too. You know, in two thousand years, the church is still led by a married man, average age forty five, with two kids. Mm -hmm. So when he gets up on a Sunday morning, he doesn't go, "Oh, I'm going to completely exclude anybody who's not married." Mm -hmm. He teaches to who he is. So that's why it's important as single adults that we don't, you know, as God has called us to minister, as God has called us to lead, that we don't point fingers at our pastor and say what he's not doing, but instead say, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed a trend over the last 10 years is that because there's probably less than five full-time singles pastors left in the country, there's a lot of pastors that have the responsibility of singles, but they're not actually ministering to singles uh, specifically. You know, they, they're not coming up with events and activities. It's all led by volunteers. So I foresee the next 10 years, there'll be probably no pastors doing singles. And they'll all be led by volunteers. Mm -hmm. and But those volunteers need to be trained, Pastor and Benny. Won't that be a good thing, you think? Well, I, I hope. But the problem is they don't have resources. They don't have yeah, access. They don't yeah, have budgets. Yeah, they yeah, don't have makes sense. a space necessarily. Right. So, And they need to be trained and yes. equipped. Yes. And so I've been doing that for years on my website. I have we you know, all kinds of free webinars and right. training and free materials right. to help them. But without that support system in place, without that pastor yeah. coming beside them and saying, what can we do as a church? Right. Can we help you? Can we provide space, finances? Can we pay for the Bible studies? Yeah. You know, can we help market it? Can we put it on the marquee? Can I mention it on Sunday morning? Yeah. How can we partner? So 10 years from now, I think it's going to almost all be led by volunteers, but the need to develop them and teach them and train them just like you train any pastor, right, right, right. will increase. Right. And you know, and, and as I said to you as, as candidly as I possibly could, um, I've had single ministers on my staffs before, but uh, I, I unfortunately, I'm confessing, I didn't take that big of interest in it because that was them. Um, and I have learned, you know, one of the biggest things, revelations that I had, and just a moment, pastor is uh, going to sing for us, was uh, many years ago, a lady came up to me and uh, after a Mother's Day sermon. And uh, she had mm -hmm. tears in her eyes and she said, uh, I won't be back for Mother's Day next year. And I said, oh, why? And she said, I'm not married. I don't have children. And, and you know, that, that broke my heart. And, and, and we honor mothers in our churches, but I want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. When they always like to recognize oldest and youngest mothers, but you know what I do? Mm -hmm. I also recognize the, the youngest and the oldest single or single again. Mm -hmm. And then yep. what I do to recognize all mamas is this is what I do. I say to all the ladies, if you have or you if you have ever had a mama, yeah. would you please stand? Yeah. And they all stand. Yeah. And, I, you know, I get, yes, sir. because, but I mean, it just broke my heart because yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. Well, one of the ways that I try to address that as a lead pastor of a church, I just honor women on Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that way yeah. I can I can take and, and, and address it into whether you're a, a married person, great. a divorced yeah. person, a single yeah. who's never been married. Yeah. And it's a great way. I think God just looks and he just honors women anyway. If Pastor, if you're out there listening, listen to Pastor Freddie. Those are words of wisdom. Right now, Angie Cleveland, she's going to sing. Are you ready, Angie? Pastor Angie, covenant song. Go, okay. Angie. If 
you never do anything else, you're still God all by yourself. If you never calm the raging sea, you're still the God that watches over me. And if you never move the storm away, my relationship with you will still remain. And if you never do anything else, you're still God all by yourself. My covenant song to you. My covenant song to you. This is my covenant song to you, my covenant song to you. If you never do anything else, you're still God all by yourself. If you never calm the raging sea, that watch is on over me. And if you never move the storm away, my I'll still remain. If you never do anything else, you're still God all by yourself. My covenant song to you. This is my heart to you, Father. Covenant song to you. This is not just a connection, but it's a, a covenant with you, Father. This is my heart for you. Covenant song to you.
Thank you, Pastor. She's going to be with us a little bit later on. And boy, we thank Angie for her singing. And also remember, prayer partners are standing by. You got the number? 864-244-1616. We want to talk with you. We want to pray with you. We'll listen to you, whatever's on your heart. I'm talking tonight. Boy, have I, I, listen, I'm the student here, okay? These are my professors. I just want you to know, I'm, I'm student, I'm skinny Benny again, okay? And I'm just sitting here drinking from the fountain. And I hope you have been too, because there are a lot of pastors out there uh, who are like myself. You, you really don't understand or know that much about singles ministry. But we're talking to Pastor Freddie Johnson from the uh, North Point Community Church there in Columbia, South Carolina. Go to his website. I'm telling you, well, I don't know what area, what to market you're watching this in, but if you're in the Columbia, South Carolina area, you need to visit his church. I'm just telling you. I'm, I encourage you. And then also, we're talking with Miss Chris Swatako, who is the co-founder of the Singles Network Ministry. And she wanted to make sure it is, you don't call up and get a date. Uh, you call and you get a date with the Lord Jesus, okay? Well, amen. That's who you're going to date. Yeah. Now, we, we were talking, and, and you know, what, what words, uh, we have a lot of folks who listen to us, of course, and a lot, there are a lot of pastors. But Chris, I'm going to ask you, what, if, if you're talking to a pastor, like you're talking to me, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm the first to admit, I don't really have that much experience, nor would I tell yeah. you I understand singles ministry. Because I don't. I'm learning tonight. What would you say to those folks, pastors and elders and deacons who are listening tonight? What would you say? And Pastor, I, I want you to tag team with her on that. Well, I, I just want them to understand who we are, that we are just, mm -hmm. you're used by God, just like a married I, I person you, used by God. I want you to look okay. at Tisa's camera. I want you to talk to them because, okay. I, I, you know, I, that's my mistake. But talk to them, no, if fine. you would. And, and then, uh, Pastor Freddie, uh, if you'll tag team with that, looking at Tisa's camera and talk to our viewers. Well, I just want you to know that, you know, single adults are valued by God the same way as married adults. And uh, that, you know, you're married on earth here, but in heaven, we're all single or married to the Lord, depending on how you look at it. So our focus can't be on just being married and what marriage is all about. It has to be on your relationship with the Lord. And so while you're a single adult, you know, God may have you single to your 20. He may have you single your whole life. I'm a never married. I'm 56 years old. And I have had an incredible life as a single adult. Now, their times are tough because, yes, I still desire to be married because God designed me that way, designed most single adults that way, but we are in a broken world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I can't allow that to be my entire focus. Um, I wish more churches would support singles and, and understand that, you know, the value that God has put on our lives, no matter what age we are, um, but none of them have. And if you want to know how to start, how to reach, how to be a, a single friendly church, where you're sensitive, you say, well, we really don't have the resources to start or I don't feel led to start, but I could do a better job of preaching from the pulpit and including them. I, I could do a better job when it comes to Mother's Day and Father's Day and, mm. and marriage preparation. So many singles want to be married, but the churches are not doing a very good job of preparing them. They'd rather just have them already married. And I'm saying, well, wouldn't it be nice if we help prepare them so that their marriages would be amazing and long lasting? So while you're out there doing what you're doing, God's called you to do, just remember that not everybody out there is married and that mm -hmm. some of them are, you know, not married like myself and they want to be used by God just as mightily as you do. Mm -hmm. And they want to serve and they want to use their gifts. And you have missed out if you have not reached a single adult uh, because I've been serving the Lord a long time and, uh, and not, you know, the fact of being single has been pretty good in some of the things that I've done because I've not been limited by having to have a family. Mm. Pastor mm. Freddie, I want you to tag yeah. team on that if you wouldn't look in right at Tisa's camera and talk to our viewers, would you please? Sir? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, Pastor Benny and I were talking off air just a few moments ago. And one of the things I remember when I first got, uh, gave my life to Christ, uh, living out in the bar scene, all that kind of stuff. And then I came into the church and then got into single adult ministry. And I'll never forget a pastor who was a pretty famous pastor. A lot of you know him, so I'm not going to name his name. But he told me that he, as soon as I got married, he believed that God had his hand on me, that I was going to have a ministry to be able to reach people for Christ and all this kind of stuff. And I ended up being single for 14 more years after the day that he made that statement mm -hmm. to me. And if I had waited until I got married 
to start sharing the gospel with people, leading people to Christ, mm -hmm. loving people who are hurting and broken and, and needed someone to come along and give them a hug and, and encourage them in some way or another. Folks, I would have never done any ministry for 14 years. I would have just wow. sitting, been sitting on my couch. And so what I would like to say to all of you that are single watching is minister now. If it's God's plan for you to have a spouse someday, that's going to happen, okay? But if it's not, or until the meantime, you want to make sure that you are ministering and taking care of people and using the gifts and talents that God has given you. And then pastors, I would say to you this, mm -hmm. uh, I've pastored in mega churches, I've pastored in small churches, and I've pastored in uh, mid-sized churches, kind of what I'm in now. And not all the churches are equal in what resources they have and things available. But here's some things that you can do, no matter what size church you are. First of all, you can uh, support Chris Wataco Ministries, okay? Mm -hmm. Our church is not a big church, the one I'm at now, but we support her prayerfully. Uh, we're going to support her financially. And, and so you can do that, okay? Mm -hmm. Treat her as a missionary. Put her on your mission sure. uh, budget, okay? So you can do that. That's you good. can... Yeah. Uh, have a Sunday school class, a small group, or something of that nature that can minister into the lives of singles. But here's what you as pastors need to understand is that ministering to single adults is unique and it's different in, in many, many ways, yes. And even though the basic needs of all people are the same, the reality is this, unless you're intentional. And you guys know this word, mm -hmm. all you pastors, mm -hmm. we all use it. <laughs> we know we have to be intentional if we want to do specific things. So if you want to minister to singles, You've got to be intentional about it. Now, you may do it differently than somebody else's church, but that would be my encouragement. Singles, use the gifts and talents you have now, okay? And pastors, be intentional about supporting single adult ministry, whether it's in your church, whether it's in your city, or whether it's supporting someone like Chris who's out there. And there really aren't many Chris Sitaco ministries left out there for single adults. You know, with talking to you folks tonight, and pastors, elders, deacons, you're listening and that, my friend, that, my dear brother, sister in Christ, is a great challenge. And again, as I told these two dear folks tonight, I'm, uh, I'm the student here. I really am. I mean, I've been in ministry since 68. And uh, as I said, we, singles ministry just wasn't there coming up yep. for me. Yep. And, uh, and it, there is a gap that I really, and I'm learning. And that's why I say I, want, I do want to get your book. I, I really do. And uh, I want you to know that uh, you can call on these folks. You need to visit them. I know they would be, you would come to churches and speak. You would come to yes, small groups, large yeah. groups, civic clubs, I mean, things like this. I mean, the both mm -hmm. of you with your very backgrounds, my gracious, uh, how you've yeah. spoken to us yep. tonight. I hope you've been listening tonight. I, I have, and I'm the first to tell you, I, I need to learn a whole lot more. Many of you have been calling in tonight with your prayer concerns. And I'm going to ask the, the pastor and I'm going to ask Chris, we're going, we're going to pray for you collectively right now, okay? We'll pray for you individually tomorrow, but we're praying collectively for so many of you who've called in with the problems, physical problems, emotional problems, spiritual problems, financial. We don't understand them all, but I'll tell you what, our Heavenly Father does. And if you'll just bring them to Him, I'm not going to tell you He's going to mail you a check in the morning. But I am going to tell you He's going to give you peace when you talk to that creditor and say, hey, I, I don't know how to pay it. Could you help me? He'll help you. I, I mean, God will help provide that way, at least give you the words to say, whatever's on your heart. But folks, I'm going to ask y'all, if, uh, if y'all would, we're just going to lay hands, if you would. And Pastor Freddie, I'm going to just ask you to offer a brief prayer. Would you please? I'd be honored. Sir. Thank you, sir. Heavenly Father, first of all, we thank you for the, just the gift of eternal life and the gift yeah. of this day. Yeah. And Father, for all those who are watching out there, uh, watching this show, who maybe yes. sent a request in, or maybe they didn't send one in, mm -hmm. but there's still a need. And, and Father, we know that, as Chris mentioned earlier, we live in a, in a broken world. Yes. And so we are asking tonight, Father God, that you, with the touch of your hand, yes. or using doctors, yes. or nurses, yes. or medications, yes. Yes. that tonight, yes. that you would right now bring healing yes. to those yes. who need phys physical healing. Amen. And Amen. we're going to give you the praise and the glory, regardless of which Amen. way you choose to yes. use. Yes. For those that are hurting emotionally, maybe they're depressed, maybe they're struggling, with their singleness. Maybe they're struggling in their marriage. Maybe they're struggling with their finances. Yes. Right now, in Jesus' name, we yes. claim, yep. Father, yep. that you would bring uh, whatever it is that they need into their lives yes. right now Amen. to make those things happen. 
Yes. And then, Father, for all the other uh, many, many things, people that have suffered through COVID, people who are yes. suffering through cancers and, and all these different things that are going on in our world today, all yes. the, the unrest in our nation politically and racially and everything else that goes on oh, yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. The problem is yeah. not political. The problem is not racial. The problem is sin. Yes, and right. help yes. all of us come to the yes. place Amen. of being broken in our sin yes. and turning to you, our yeah. Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if there's a lost person out there tonight, yes. in Jesus' name, we would ask that you would amen. call into the show or reach out to someone. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope you've enjoyed this first hour. I have. I want you to know, I have learned tonight. One thing about being a host, when you have such gifted people like these folks, I mean, uh, you know, and when you, when you admit pastors, we don't know it all, because we don't, uh, particularly when it comes to this area of ministry. Thank you both. I mean, you have really opened my eyes and opened my heart, and I thank you ever so much. We're going to be back on the other side. Now, don't go anywhere. I promise you, I'll be right here. So I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to be looking for you through that camera. Pastor Angie Cleveland's going to be with us over here. She's going to continue to sing. So don't you go in. Don't turn the dial, please. I'm Pastor Benny. I'll see you on the other side. I'm waiting on you. Bye-bye.